Hey everyone, Nick here. How's it going? Hope you're all doing well. Anyways, what does the phrase big data mean to you? It's clear that it's become a huge buzzword in tech with rapidly evolving definitions. Most simply, however, it refers to the large scale analysis of huge, even monstrous amounts of data. There are a ton of articles written about how we're approaching the zettabyte in terms of total data usage, which is approximately 1 trillion gigabytes. That being said, big data has huge implications in the field of computational medicine, where artificial intelligence, billionaires, and cognitive computing have come together in a massive battle against the world's most life-threatening diseases. That leads me to ask you, what can computing do for medicine that hasn't already been done? The short answer, a lot. So what is big data? Well, for starters, imagine the billions of gigabytes of information that are shared every day. So much of the world is connected and it causes this mighty exchange of data. Using modern computing techniques, we're able to harness this information for all it's worth and perform huge amounts of analysis on it. Now we can analyze things as useless as your tendency to watch cat videos on YouTube to the human genome and mapping out the outcomes of a certain genetic disorder or other illnesses. And if we continue to think about this, we see how much progress we've made in medicine, but how little of the surface we've actually tapped. Big data offers us a truly unprecedented look at medicine that neither researchers, doctors, or even scientists can offer up. For one, it allows us to examine and contribute to a huge body of information. Sergey Brin's ambitious quest to figure out Parkinson's disease relies not only on the cooperation of thousands of people, but also a durable and robust research database. That leads me to question. If we're ever going to figure out illness, it's clear that we need to piece together every bit of our own DNA sequence. Imagine the computing power necessary to sequence billions of base pairs, and that's only research for a single biomolecule. We still have to factor in every combination of every strand of DNA with multiple illnesses. And we finally get an idea of how badly medicine needs computing intelligence. Scientists often dream up of a computer designed drug for every illness out there and unlocking our genetic material is the key to doing so. And we see how badly medical data in general is skewed and we need that bottleneck to be resolved through computing power. When doing genomics research, scientists have to retrieve, analyze and format a bunch of data. Superimpose that challenge with the exponential growth of DNA sequences and we see how quickly DNA constraints become a problem. And one of the biggest issues for our stagnation in the field is because big pharma and computational medicine as a whole have a very decentralized volume of information. Websites like YouTube store all of their data and info on a single platform. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for research in medicine. Here, we have thousands of labs across the globe that might be doing the same thing, but have their own different local storage and analytical mediums. Imagine the increased efficiency if all of that was collectively curated and processed. It's a great thought and no current invention exists to solve it. We can't constantly live in a world where people work on different projects for different interests all the time. In the end, we need to sit down and thoroughly discuss the problems we face in analytical medicine. Centralized data could save us from some of the world's most threatening diseases and just picture the deaths we could prevent at the intersection of tech and medicine. It's clear that some solutions exist, some better than others, but stay tuned because I know we're all really trying hard. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.